For Prima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me to unpack his column titled For Democracy to be Meaningful, Representative Government and Popular Power Need to Coexist. You repeatedly criticize representative government and lean towards popular power. And your article tries to achieve a balance, but was the recent election not a manifestation of the popular inaction, also at the ballot box making definite decisions on who to entrust to hold office now? Yes, you know, I have leaned towards popular power because of my experience in the UDF period, where instead of just waiting every five years to have a vote, uh, and doing no political role apart from that, people played a role in the streets, in their jobs, and all of that. But I was reading this chap, John Hoffman and Paul Graham, uh, a book called Introduction to Political Theory, very, very good book. It's in its fourth edition now. Uh, and they were saying that they're not opposites. Because even in ancient Greece, the people in the assemblies, ancient Greece is supposed to be where democracy was first established. Even there, the people did not do everything. They assigned some things to sections of the people. What he's saying then is you have to, not everyone, especially with millions of voters, not everyone can be directly involved in some aspects of government. But when they are there, they must uh, be speaking on behalf of people who are not there. So it's a particular reason uh, for supporting um, a combination of the two. Um, I don't see the elections as really manifesting what I'm arguing which is a form of representation where you consciously try to speak as the people who voted for you uh, want you to speak. I don't think that was present. These people were thinking of, will I get on the list? Will I get into parliament? Things like that. So I don't think it's what Hoffman and Graham had in mind. And as a proponent of popular power or coexistence of representative and popular democracy, do the election results point to hopeful signs, such as fusion of democratic models? I don't think so. Um, you know, we have to see what happens in the period that lies ahead. But none of the parties spoke about that, although some of the smaller parties like Rise and Zanzi, did carry out consultations on the ground, which is a part of uh, ultimately encompassing popular, the popular voice. But in general, uh, I don't think anyone really espoused uh, popular power or uh, ongoing interrelationship between popular and representative democracy. Also, Raymond, you called Hoffman and Graham saying that the reason why representative democracy is required is that everyone cannot be in an assembly, as was reputed to be the case in ancient Athens. Also, some representatives are required who have an understanding of the conditions and aspiration of the voters. They must have empathy for the people or the electorate. So when the ANC was toppled, was that an example of the electorate saying that they do not represent the voters and that they chose others to do that? Well, they didn't directly say that when they removed the ANC from having more than 50%, it's because they didn't represent them. But I think in the uh, media interviews with people from before the elections, People were fed up with the ANC, not everyone. But I don't think they went so far as Hoffman and Graham as to suggest that the parties uh, or any of the parties were had the empathy for the people, whereby when they were there, 
it could be as if the people whom they represented were present. That's why they say, speak of represent and represent. In other words, they present not just a document, but they present in a way that makes the people who they represent present in the parliament. Now, that wasn't there. And lastly, Raymond, there are speculations about coalition governments, and you have not written about coalition in your column. So what was the reason for you not to write about coalitions? I didn't write about it because I'm not very comfortable with the way people describe the various parties. If the EFF says, we believe in socialism, then they are described, the media just takes what they say as what they are. And then the media says they're a radical party. Now, the EFF one day will say, we believe there shouldn't be borders, that they're not they're against xenophobia. The next day, they'll go on an inspection uh, of whether the illegal foreign uh, nationals working in places. So I'm, I'm a bit wary about how, how do you talk about coalitions when at the moment they're putting policies, the ones who are not the majority or, or not um, uh, the strongest ones are putting forward policy positions which they really wouldn't put into practice if they were to be there. So I'm a bit cynical about it. I will write, write about it later, but I'm not happy with the way commentators write about it where uh, what you say you believe in is taken as the final word. Therefore, you are conservative, therefore you are radical, and so forth. So I decided to leave it because to me it's not credible. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Crimea Media's polity about for democracy to be meaningful, representative government and popular power need to coexist.